Hey guys, David here from Mindful Kung Fu on behalf of Sudaquan Academy. Thanks for joining us again. On today's video, we're going to talk about something called spool and spindle. It's that inner body and outer body and how they move and flow around and within each other to create power and a release of chi. We learn how to root in that ground, allow that energy to come up via the waist and express out from the upper half. Let's go take a look. Alright guys, so when it comes to spool and spindle, we're going to look at the two bodies, right? We call them the inner and the outer body, or in this case, the spool and the spindle. Now when it comes to Kung Fu and Tai Chi and Qigong, you hear these terms yin and yang, where the one becomes two and so forth and so on. And this is kind of indicative to that, right? This idea of there's two. Even you and your body, you have two of them. Now, two things have to happen. One, you want to stay upright. You don't want to have this slouching body when you're trying to defend yourself or to allow chi to move and pass through you. But the other thing is, is you want to be able to move with it. You see, so you're starting to see this idea of spool and spindle. If we look at a spindle, a spindle is just a rod and the spool goes over it. As it goes over it, you can turn the spool all you want and the spindle never moves. And that's what we're trying to achieve here in our body. So let's talk about this. So the first thing we have to do is create an alignment. Now the alignment we're looking at here is the tucking of the hips and sitting down and staying straight and also tuck, uh, letting the chin go down and letting a little bit of air out here and, and now we'll turn sideways. The body can stay a little bit nice and aligned and straight. Now from here, I don't want to move this. I don't want to release here, right? Because I, I allow the energy to leak out that back half. If I go here, I pinch off my neck and now chi gets pinched and allow uh, no more chi coming through here. So where you can see that alignment is incredibly important. As I move and flow, you can see where, what my master would say, we're leaking. Leaking power or leaking chi in different parts here. And there's all these interesting parts we can leak. And as a human species, we tend to have a posture that we sit with. But in martial art, that posture is very, very important. I need to have a strong posture. Okay, now that's the first part. That's the spindle. Now the spool means you have to be able to move that posture. You see, I need to be able to stay straight and aligned, but also be able to turn at the same time to create power. Let's take a look at this. Now you can see my full feet. Okay, now we'll kind of talk a little bit about what's happening. First off, we have to see, and we'll just look at a regular side-by-side -side position here first, okay? This is how we would practice it at the beginning of my school. So now the feet are flat, and they're making contact into the ground from the toe all the way to the heel, and that's important. Now I'm just going to bend the knees slightly, and then now I'm going to pay attention from here to the waist to my foot, and we're going to call that one path. We talk a lot about pathway in these videos in order to bring chi up. We'll just allow it to be at the waist at this point, okay? Now, the feet are flat, and they're touching, and the waist is here. Now, what's in the middle is your knees. A lot of times, our knees, we lock them, or we end up stopping the chi or the flow of energy by locking those knees. We want to keep the knees loose, and the most important thing is we want to be able to move from the hips and allow the knees to go for, I call it, go for the ride. Can you see it? The knees don't want to get in the way of it. If I get my knees in the way, you see, there's a huge difference here. Now I'm in my knees, I'm moving and flowing, and it becomes very abrupt. It's no longer smooth and flowing, and we don't want that. So the waist is your driving force. If I slow it down a little bit, you'll see. If I go past the 45 degrees, that knee is going to collapse, and that means I've lost Right? I've lost my grounding. That's important because the most important thing is I have good grounding. It's kind of like pulling a plug out of the wall. Right? If I lose that foot and I pull that plug, there's no longer energy coming through. So I allow that to stay flat and then I move the hips along enough to where it doesn't come out. Both feet are still flat and the knees, really important, are just going for the ride and they're not really collapsing. There's really no thought in them because they're allowing the chi to flow through, so therefore they're, I call it loose. They're loose knees. There's nothing going on, they're loose. The connection is strong, the hips move side to side. Now, one thing you notice is that as my hips move, guess what's connected to the hip? Yeah, from that sacrum, that spine goes up. So literally, that spine is going up. So as long as I'm moving hips, guess what? The whole body moves too, you see it? 
So now that the whole body can move, I can relax. Let that chin go a little bit and kind of what we would call this terminology of hanging from, from the top, right? In Tai Chi, they talk about hanging from there. The back of the head being the top of the head and now I'm hanging down. Uh, we won't go too much in detail with that, but that's that idea. So now I'm straight, I'm hanging, and my muscles are hanging off the bone, so to speak. Another terminology we'll hear a lot. And now I can just move my center, you see. And now as I move my center, everything goes for the ride. And that, my friends, is spool and spindle. And that allows us to create torque in our body. So we've talked about the hips. Now let's talk about the roping of the shoulders. When it comes to roping of the shoulders, it has this feel, like let's say my hips are square, my hips are square to you guys, and they're locked. Now as I turn only my shoulders together, you see the roping of the shirt here, okay? And I go the other way, same thing, roping of the shirt. So if I'm able to keep the energy moving and flowing down, and my shoulders move only, it'll cause what you call roping, and you can see that line, or that line this way of roping. Now let's look in terms of what we were talking about. As I sit down and align myself here, now I turn like we did before. There's a turning of the hips slightly, just to the 45 degrees, and now I turn here. You see, I'm able to turn a little bit more. You'll find you're able to turn more than your hips. Your hips can only go so far, but my shoulders can turn pretty good, depending on how flexible you are and depending on how much tightness is in there. So once again, I turn my hips. The hips stop to the 45, and now I can turn here. So an exercise that I do is just simply this. So hip stop, and I just rope. Then I shift back and go the other way, making sure that these knees are over the toes. You don't want to collapse them. That'll take all your power. There has to be a straight connection into the ground, and as I come over top of those toes, then now I can rope, and then I can go the other way. Once again, push slightly, and rope. Move one, and move two. Good. This is such a great exercise for getting those hips loosened so you can have torque, whack, in your power in your martial arts. Also good for health, of course, relaxing, stretching out that lower back and the middle back, just all good things. Now, if we look at it as far as the punches, if I just do a regular reverse punch, let's say from a horse stance position here, now, I shift here, my hip goes to the 45, I come back and rope the waist slightly, let's say I'm here. Now, as I shift forward, I stop the hips and then turn the waist, see? Now, all of a sudden, the thing about power that's really important is that that shoulder has to go farther forward than this one in order to deliver power. They can't be the same. So the hips turn, but the shoulder is what releases. Now look, that right shoulder is clearly farther forward than that left shoulder. And now you have release. What this does, it allows us to understand that we're building first. And then releasing. Building, releasing. Instead of just punching out of something, there's a yin to the yang. There's a building of energy, releasing of energy, you see? And the knees aren't collapsing, the connection to the ground is tight and strong, and you're rooted, what we would call rooted into the ground when that happens. Now I can, let's take a look at this. I step back into a regular stance like we talked about before, fighter stance, kind of like a back stance. Now from here, I shift back, and once again, I set myself up into that back leg here, and I'm sideways, which is nice. And now I push, and you can see the hips can only go so far. The hips can only go so far, but the waist can still rope. And once again, that shoulder's farther forward, and now you have this crack, this releasing power coming from the ground, spiraling energy, wham, and coming out strong from the legs. And this is the importance of spool and spindle. Now, here I want to talk about something really important. I'm not pushing with the knee. I'm pushing the foot and driving with the hip. This is so important. If you push with the knee, you'll throw yourself right out of balance. You'll just throw yourself right out of the ground, okay? You want to push the foot 
out of this winding up position, but you want to drive with the hip and you can see it. Crack that driving of the hip. Now as that drive of the hip, crack, I release the upper half and now you have crack, this feeling and notice my breath just goes with it, wham, right? This driving force in the form of a pathway and releasing chi that moves through the path and that's really important. I'm building a path from my foot all the way to the end of my knuckle and whoom, putting intention in that and now I'm able to release it, right? So we're here and I sit, I wind up, whoom, and I release. Sit, wind up, whoom, release. All right, guys, here we go. So this is Andrew. He's going to be our opponent for today. Uh, for those of you that tune into the other videos, you know he's a regular on the show here. Uh, he's, we have the bag here. He's going to bring the bag up, and we're going to demonstrate this really easily. I'm going to bring you a little more of this way. There you go. Just so you can see the, the mechanics here of how this works. When we talked about sitting down into the stances here like this and pushing off that back leg, driving from the hip and pushing that heel into the ground, driving from the hip. Uh, notice my knee is bent in our system. We do not extend the knee fully. We sit down, the knee is slightly bent, boom, as we, as we strike, okay? So from here like this, I turn, push that glute, release the arm, and then there's a roping of the waist, boom. And it has this releasing feel to it versus trying to, I can do it, I can do it, Andrew. <laughs> Not really. No. Yeah. No. I'm only about 155 pounds. Clearly he outweighs me. I don't think I'm going to get very far. I'm just <laughs> punching with my arm. So here we go. So I sit down, I sit into that ground, spiral that energy, and then just slightly release it, drive it from the hip, and it comes right out. Yeah, good. One more time, sit and release. And I can go just nice and easy. I don't have to go fast. I don't have to go hard. I'm not trying to outdo anybody here or anything like that, okay? We're just trying to show how it releases. Even if I go slow motion here, turn, drive, rope, and strike, okay? We'll take a look at a few just kind of really releasing here. Hands here and good. Driving that force down. Yeah, good. Feel that a little bit? Oh, I feel it. Excellent. So now we do here, same thing on this side as we do our jab, okay? So back here, good. I'm sitting in. Now I'm gonna turn the waist this way. The most important thing here is that the knees stay over the toes and the hips turn via the, the, the movement here, right? We call the tantien. We're moving the tante in this way. We're keeping the knees over the toes and we're stopping the waist and then finishing the driving force with the shoulders as the shoulders come around to create more power. So even with the jab, boom, I release it here. And then of course cross, same thing, boom, and strike there. All right, so now Let's take a look at, we have a technique in the system, it's called diagonal punch. So I'm gonna take a look at that, we're gonna break it down a little bit and we're gonna see how the spool and spindle works with the diagonal punch, okay? All right, so we can put the bag down. And let me see, I think the best way to do it perhaps come from this side, so you guys can see the roping of the waist, yeah. So, real easy, I'm not gonna to try to get in any kind of combat situation, we're just gonna have them here so you can see the mechanics, okay? The mechanics are this, I'm shifting to the front leg, turning the waist and stopping the waist to this direction here because look as long as these knees stay over especially this knee stays over the foot here it's pulling my waist you can see it it's pulling my waist right and it stops it here now the roping of the of the shoulders are here okay so as i push forward and shift and turn whoom, i rope the shoulders whack, and then we have the strike Right here, okay? A really great move for just kind of sliding in and around somebody. But this is what's happening here with this spool and spindle. Now notice something really important. As this turns, everything is still aligned, but it squeezes. So it kind of has this feeling of like squeezing the sponge or squeezing the washcloth. You know, when I was a kid, I'm from Virginia, we'd squeeze the washcloths out after we, after we wash. So, you know, it kind of has that feeling of squeezing it out from the ground. So again, I 
push, squeeze. See, one more time. Driving force from here, push, squeeze. Nice, strong, crack energy coming out the body here. And then just, crack, just strike right over the top, yeah. I think that would uh, do the job. That huh? would do the job, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Excellent, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of spool and spindle, or the inner body and outer body, and how it works in conjunction with the ground, with the rooting, and producing that power, releasing of the power through the roping of the waist. And if you like this video, make sure you check out the others. And remember, life is about passion and expression of who you are deep down inside. And like my grandmaster always says, martial arts is not something you do, it is something you are. Until next time.